What's up guys? It's King Daddy DMAC and welcome! Welcome back to another episode of FTB Infinity here on the Hermitcraft server. How's everybody doing? Everybody doing good today? I'm doing pretty good today. I'm pretty excited because I think today's the day. Today's the day. You know what I'm talking about? Today's the day that we're going to try and unshunk load the canyon base. We're going to try and switch over completely to the solar panels. Pretty neat. Last episode, we set up that this crazy fortune farm. Yeah, the crazy fortune farm. Do your thing. It's not balls. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. We ended off last episode. We needed to craft up more solars. I got three more ultimate solar panels. Pretty cool. You guys were super helpful and helped me out in the comments and how to get the, I think it's the, the industrial iron. Let me see. Indus. No, what's it called? Oh, cried. <laughs> I forgot the name of it. I always do. I, is it steel or iron? Okay, refined iron ingots. You guys were super helpful and helped me out with a good recipe. Originally, we're doing pig iron. Now, we're doing it from iron ingots and pulverized coal, which seems to be the easiest way to do it. And in the induction smelter. So it's fairly fast. It's pretty cool. It's definitely really easy. And we have tons of pulverized coal that comes out from our quarry and dumps out into our sag mill. So very cool. Thank you guys for that, for that recipe. We set up this crazy capacitor bank. Look at that. It holds, what is that? 2 billion, 500 million RF craziness. And we're going to make it even bigger today. I crafted up another 200 200 of them. So it's pretty cool. Let's go ahead. Let's start adding these in. We're going to have to actually build out more room for this to even fit in well. We're starting to get right towards the end of our crag. I think we could fit this in a little bit bigger. So yes, I want to build this up bigger. I want to add in the other solar panels. Let's turn this bad boy. Did I turn it off already? Is you off? I'm getting a little bit of problems with the XP still uh, building up there. I should probably put in more vacuum hoppers up top. This is off, right? It's got to be off because it would be going if it was on. Anyway, let's throw in these three more solars. Now, each of these solars are generating 30 over 32,000 RF per tick. We have two of them right here. Let's put on the rest of them. I think that should be good. So that's four or five of them. That's not bad. That should be way more power than we do. Now, of course, we could put these into these solars into like their own world, Miscraft world, where it was daytime all the time. So they'd always get power. I want to try and avoid that at first just to see if we can. But of course, that would ultimately be the best idea in an all the time daytime world. Um, What was I doing? So anyway, I'm going to clear this out a little bit more so we can fit in a bigger capacitor bank. And I know it's not great to have like insanely large capacitor banks. We'll cut this down if we can. I just want to make sure that it's enough to, uh, to be able to power everything and make it through the night. So I think that should be cool. And of course, the capacitor banks, believe it or not, in Opus, when I was checking that out on our lag hunt, um, the gyms has an insane amount of capacitor banks, and I noticed they're really not that bad on Opus. He is well over a thousand, I think, of them. And uh, it, it really wasn't hurting the server as much as they used to. They used to be a lot worse, the lower level capacitor banks. But these vibrant guys, you get pretty good bang for your buck. And the draconic energy thingamabobber, you know, that big cool looking orb... That's actually really bad on the server. But block for block, I think these are probably just... I, I think that they'll do just fine. And I just love this display. I love it. I think it's so cool. So that's why we're using it. So anyway, let's put these in now. Um, should be able to use our builder's wand. Man, we need to upgrade to the next level, level builder's wand really badly. Like, really soon, too. Anyway, I think we should have enough. Let's do... That's a big capacitor bank. <laughs> Look at that. 
five billion. Three zeros, the three comma club. Oh, baby. Oh, that's so nuts. So that is more a higher input during the day than what we currently have. And we still have more. Is that enough? I think we could do another. Let's do another one back. Bam, 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 bam. All right. Bam, 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 bam. That is a big capacitor bank. What does that get up to? Six billion two hundred and fifty million. How many do we have left? Oh man, we might be able to go one bigger, and that's it. And then I'm calling it quits. And I think this is already too big. But hey, hey, I crafted it. We might as well use it. Plus, we have the capacitor banks that are still at the candy base. I really didn't use much there because there, you didn't have to like the way we had our power. You don't have to have it in like. It was stored in raw potions, because the potions would burn up so quickly. Alright, alright, alright. Cleared out. We're going to have to fix the look from the outside. Let's try and set these in. If I can't set out an actual cube, then I'm not going to set them out. Do we have enough? Oh, that would be so cool. Let us have enough. Uh-huh. All right, all right. Oh, I think we just might. Maybe I'll have to craft one more. Yes, and we have one left over. Oh, that's so super cool. All right, what are we up to now? 7.5 billion. Not bad, not bad. It's not a trillions, but hey, that should be plenty. So... Let's let that fill up. We got to move all of our Tesseracts over here. All right, all fixed from the outside. Super cool. Oh, I dig this, I dig this. Now again, at nighttime, it's not getting anything. So I think we're gonna use, we can use our potions to help jumpstart this. Let's go ahead and do this. Let's run over to the canyon base. Let's grab out all the tesseracts that we need. So that's for the quarry power. Let's go ahead and move that over. So our quarry right now is off. Let's move our mob juice one. That's main power. I think we have another couple ones back here. Nether quarry. Which we don't have hooked up, but whatever. And sludge. Alright, so let's run back quickly. To the tech base, get these all hooked back up in. Holy crap, look, okay. Okay, so that seems about right. That's what our out is. Energy, receive only, potion power, check. And should see a huge influx of positive power. Look at that. Bam. Nice. All right. So I'm going to let this baby fill up. And then we're just going to kind of wait and see if it, how many, if it can last through the night. We'll test this a couple times. All right, I've gone through the first couple of nights, and we have not even come close to putting a dent. This bar has stayed full the entire time. It's freaking nuts. So that that's way overkill, at least for what we're doing now. So I'm going to let those capacitor banks con continue to craft. But we're going to knock off this back row for now, and we'll just add it on the side so we can get it symmetrical looking. So now all of our tesseracts can be evenly spaced. And we'll have to come up with a nice design to go on the backs and the sides or something. But I think that's good. Everything look good in the back? Nice! Alright, so what are we going to continue with today? Um, we've been talking about it for a while. I'd really like to get going on the Thom Crafter Room. So that we can get that all moved out. We'll go back to the candy base at the end of the episode and unchunk load it and just make sure that that works okay. But everything here is going well. Um, we do have to worry about the fact that the spawners 
that are dumping stuff in are going to be turned off at the canyon base. So we're going to lose the feathers. I'm trying to think, what else are we pushing over? I stopped doing the, um, the blaze rods a while ago. So we should just be doing netherrack, and I'm not sure why the crafting tables are messed up right now. It's very weird. Sometimes it just don't like to come over the wood. Let's see what's going on. Um, oh, I forgot, I forgot to actually take notice of the node. Oh, man! All right, the ordo, we're up to 4,000. We're doing pretty well, and I really find it bizarre that the fire, the faint, uh, what is it? What's the fire called again? Ignis. I think that's so weird that the Ignis right now is our lowest one about. Yeah. And here, that's the one thing that we've been constantly pumping in. I had 24 million netherrack, and we're still at 24 million. It, like, barely touches it. It's crazy. All right, but for Thaumcraft Room, we'll check on what's going on at the crafting tables later. Um... I talked about wanting to have the entrance. It's going to be a big place. Um, I think I'd like to have it be the entrance over here, all in this area, and then have it kind of go all underneath the mountain, wrap around, and then over here we'll have a big tower going upward. So I think that's cool. And we should have plenty of room to work. This crag is just so ginormous. So I think I'm going to start off by clearing out a bunch of this area. All right. So I've been clearing out for about half an hour. Let's go take a look. Bam. Oh, that launch is so far now. I feel like something's been updated or I don't even know. Remember before it would just barely get us there? Look at that now. It launched. <laughs> I can launch all the way into the building. Anyway, yeah, I've just been clearing out. It just takes a little bit of time. And um, I think it's good. I think it's good. I'm trying to shape it into the mountain for at least this main entrance area. We're going to have this area over here, which we'll probably wrap around and go into the tower. So that's cool. That's very cool. And I probably still got to drop the floor down. Now, I don't know what blocks I want to do. I don't know if I want to go for a lighter theme, like lighter color or darker color. So it's a little up in the air. The only thing I don't like about the darker colors is on YouTube. It just everything just ends up looking black. Like, eh, I don't know. I don't feel like it shows like through as well. But like purpley is usually the Thawmcraft colors. So anyway, shaping out here. And then going back into this area, look at this. If we did the floor at this level, it would match in to our crazy AE Pokeball Sphere thing. Which I think would be cool, since some of the Thaumcraft stuff is AE related. We could maybe make this section of the sphere be for that. That might be kind of cool and have a bunch of storages. And then go around. Very cool. And then we'll probably build upwards into the mountain. So, like, this would just be the main entrance area. So, still a lot of clearing out to do. And I'm not completely positive what I want to do for this. It's kind of like I'm I'm winging it. I'm freestyling it. So, we'll see. But I want to know from you guys, what blocks should we use? What, what do you like? What colors? And what particular types of blocks? Because there's a lot of different things we can do. And I kind of, in my head, had the whole theme. Let's go, let's go look at the spawn base. This is the theme we did for here, and I kind of in my head had like an idea of a theme like this, but like 10 times the size, like much, much bigger, huge columns, but this kind of feel. So let me know if you guys liked this or if we should do something new, but I thought that would be cool. How are you doing, guy? Look at that. We finally, after how many episodes, over 60 episodes, finally have reached over 100 in everything on that guy. And everything on this guy. And by the time I realize that, you know, how long it takes to do that, we've made a, a hungry node that's like in the thousands. That's definitely the way to go, guys. Definitely the way to go. So, yes, pretty soon we're going to be saying goodbye to this area and expanding. I think that would be cool. Anyway, in other news, at the Canyon Base, we have finally finished doing the Ender IO stuff. So, we've got our power switched over. Um, let's, let's look. Kind of prematurely went there. <laughs> let's look. How's this guy been doing? It's full. It is freaking 
full. It's been full forever. It, it doesn't even touch it. We have way more than we need for power, and there's no reason to do the potions anymore. So, as it is, the server... See how... Actually, you can see right there. The server's performing amazingly already. I don't know what happened. TFC recently moved his base out of the overworld into his new miscraft dimension, which you can see right there is TFC Void Age. And since then, the server's dropped down from being at an overall of like 30 down to now 18, which kind of makes me think, oh, uh, do we even need to unchunk load this? But I still want to see how much of a difference does it make? How much of an impact did this guy have? Now, we do have our mushroom farm and our tree farm. And the tree farm's real important. We got to keep that going for the hungry node. Every so often, a tree grows upside down. Let's knock that out. But we still need to keep this going. But this is on a separate chunk loading area. Just from this one little chunk loader right here is loading everything. So I think we can disconnect all this bad boys. So how should we do this? Should we, I'm thinking we should probably, I'm a thinking we should probably move the quantum entangled singularity off out of the sky to disconnect it from the AE shenanigans. And is there anything else here that would be, or create a problem? I don't think so. I put labels on all the spawners. Let's go ahead, switch it off. Witches, no more. Blaze, no more. Chickens, no more. All right, so all the spawners are off. That's safe. I had to recently change out all the barrels. I have, those are bedrockium drums. And <laughs> look at this. I have three, almost four complete barrels full of XP. That's why I was voiding out all the XP from our fortune machine before. If you guys can remember. But I think everything's good. I think we can just disconnect it. We're going to have to move all these bad boys, but we'll deal with that later. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think that's good. All right, so let's knock that guy out since that doesn't matter. We'll put this in the chest. Let's grab this guy, let's pull you out, wham, and let's grab a lever, let's go like that, and we may have to reset the server, because sometimes orphan chunks are a thing, but that now unchunk loads it, so we should be able to get out of here, it is no longer connected to the main world, let's go... Back to the tech base, just make sure everything's still doing okay. Alright, everything's still doing fine. Nothing's blown up yet. <laughs> Alright, um, I'm going to do a quick little reset of the server. And uh, then we, I guess we can already look at the TPS, see what's going on. C-O-F-H TPS. And... Where does it say overall? 20, we're at 17, so that like barely moved it yet. Let's do a full reset and make sure there's no orphaned chunks. All right, servers reset. Everything looks pretty dang good. Let's do a new one. Bam. Oh man. So the overall didn't really go down very much, but the overworld, look at that. It's down to 12. This was at 20. The other day, a couple episodes back, when we started this whole project of shut down the canyon. Of solar power energy. This was at 20. Now, of course, TFC moving was a large part of that. But I think we're doing a good part in making the server a better place. And for the first time in I don't know how long, our server is not running at 100% CPU. Which is amazing. Which is amazing. And we're doing, we're doing good. We're doing very good. Everything is full go. Everything's working beautifully. Oh man, it just feels so good. It feels so good. So, 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 so. Um, we need to move all those Ender IO machines out pronto. Because I know we're going to end up needing them. So I got to find a good place for them. I suppose we could set them up right over here and it wouldn't be that big of a deal. I'm trying to see if there's any other areas in the tech room that are unused. 
It's unfortunate that this comes out of the mountain. Anyway, okay, I think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to move all the Ender I.O. machines over here and all the auto crafting stuff. That should be good. And then we can seriously leave the canyon area for good. So as soon as we go back to the canyon area, it's going to go nutballs again. How did you guys spawn in? You're not supposed to spawn in. You're off. You weirdos. All right. So I'm going to do these one by one. Also the draconic chest. All these patterns. Yep. Let me take care of it. All right. I think we are good. I've got this crazy nut ball thing going on here. All the machines moved and I've got all the wiring in so that we can add on. In fact, improve this instead of just move it and we can put a ton more machines in so we can make our Ender IO automation go a heck of a lot faster. So in any case, in any case, um, we got a wire in power and we got a wire in the AE. And I just want to double check this. I have this set on push and pull. I'm going to have to redo all those bad boys, but that's okay. That's okay. So let's put this back. Let's put the pattern back in. I'll worry about the configurations after the fact. For the AE, we're going to do a new brown signal over to here. So I should just be able to wire in each of those like that. That's why we have all this squirrely wire. And once again, yes, I'm doing all my extra utility stuff. All right, let's show you get that guy over. Get that guy over. So we have six channels going on here thus far. Wham, wham, wham. And I suppose right around here we can then do another guy. Is that connecting? Perfect, perfect. And then wire this down further. From there. And you know what? We can just go to the dense guy. Right about there, I'll make a bunch more brown wires. You can go like that. Let's get the P to P connected in. So I already programmed the uh, the signal. So all I gotta do is right click there, loaded settings from the brown wire. Awesome. And let's spread over the red. Let's just make sure we have enough signals here, only using four. So that's fine. All right, online, all set. Let's knock you out. All right, so we're good there. So we've got that done. Let's now get a retrieval node hooked in that will pull all the stuff out of the machine so that I can do right here. Uh-oh. See how that's touching there? We don't want that touching there. So maybe actually move this right here. Bam, bam, bam. Perfect. So that's all set. Let's get the hyper node there that will power it all. I have a new test rack coming over from the main power. Nice, that should be all good. I'm gonna throw in a few more speed guys. Though it is probably not necessary at all. It'll go through the connections just ever so slightly faster. There. All right, we are pretty good. We should be all in line. Should be able to crowd all the machines. Let me just do all the settings for these guys. So they're all going to be pushing out the back and pulling in from the top. All right, all the configurations are done. Let's do our first little test. I want to be able to have a machine on each side of these so that we can craft super quick. Let's go ahead and try this. Um, those are alloy smelters. So let's craft up another 12, I believe. Start. <laughs> Do we even need to use anything from Ender IO for that? For that craft? All right, it's already done. All right, we'll put those guys in too. Oh man. All right, um, what about vibrant capacitors? 
or not vibrant capacitors, they're just called octatic. All right, here we go. So we're gonna need 12 more of those guys too. This should do it, this should do it. Start. Nice. Going through, boom, get picked up, nice. Going through, boom, get picked up, nice. Oh, I like it, I like it a lot. All right, so that should go through all those. Um, I'm gonna add on some more of these smelters. And we'll do another test and see how quick this goes through in crafts. All right, guys, say your final goodbyes to the canyon. It's so sad, it's so sad, it's okay. It's okay, it's still gonna be here. We just are not gonna be using it for the most part. But who knows, who knows, maybe we'll come back. Maybe we'll come back. I don't understand, there's something that's pulling one RF a tick out of this guy still. I'm assuming it's the power monitor. I think that's gotta be what it is. It shouldn't be anything else, let me see. If I disable that. Yeah, it's gotta be, because that's the only thing that's hooked up. That and then the fluid transposer, but that's full. And this guy here which I don't think it's fluctuating, but who knows? You guys can let me know in the comments. In any case, everything's all set. Chunk loader is off. We still do have the tree farm open. What the heck? How'd you spawn, bro? <laughs> A couple of them spawned. There's something weird going on with these spawners. When it's like unchunk loaded to then chunk loaded. Huh. Anyway. All good, tree farm will still be going, but everything else is off, so bye-bye. Farewell. Au revoir, I don't know if au revoir means bye, but I think it means bye in French. <laughs> um, let's take a look, final things. Yeah, I redid all this. I got all, like, based on the block that we're doing in the machine cluster, I put uh, vibrant alloys, energetic alloys, electrical steel, dark steel, and then um, I think I'm gonna switch the alloy smelters because we're not using anything in this sag mill. And then for this one, we're only doing pulverized coal, which we don't even need to be done because our quarry machine automatically does it. But um, we can also move that to our pulverizer setups and free up a bunch of space. But I think this is pretty good. And for the most part, unless we get further into Ender IO, this should, this should be automation for everything. It's okay if these guys share the machines. So pretty neat. I also made um, a change on the actual machines. So you can see, um, I just put push out for each of them. So now they directly push into the interfaces. And uh, I was able to pull out that transfer, the retrieval node. Now it's just power in the back. So and we can probably condense this a lot more if we use the Ender IO wires, which maybe we'll now do. And they can share, sherry share. But in any case, I think that's gonna about do it. Our power's been doing amazingly great. It's still like basically full all the time. I love it. And our impact on the server is gonna be so much less. Such a friendlier, more wonderful place. Oh, that's good. So guys, I think that's gonna about do it. Make sure, make sure, make sure to let me know about the Thomcraft room, what your ideas are on, uh, on blocks we should use. This should be a pretty massive project. I'm pretty excited about finally undertaking it. I think it'll be really cool. Really, really cool. So anyway, guys, help me out in the comments. Also, don't forget to say hi. If you have, if you have nothing, no tips or tricks, just say hi. Say, DMAC, how you doing? What's up? What's up? Or tell me how your day was or anything you like. I love hearing from you guys. I always read the comments. Always, always. It's, it's my favorite thing to do. Um, in any case, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Hit those thumbs up. Help support the series. And as always, peace out.